could end sentiment kind to guide us all the way to the day, the, way to the, day. the day where we'll be as what we did in our life to make it that way. So we need to be ready and prepared. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Dear brothers, welcome. Dear sisters, welcome. Dear viewers, welcome to another episode of Sunnah Style here on Huda TV. Sunnah Style designed to bring back that love of Islam, to bring back that love of the Sunnah, to bring back the understanding of Islam to the youth, to the Ummah in general. At the same time to expose the negative effects of the different cultures and different ideas and ideologies that are coming upon, attacking us from every, you know, from every side. We live today in the 21st century in this global village. Globalization is something that no one can avoid. And hence we need to be prepared. We need to have the tools to fight against this. We need to have the tools to prepare ourselves, to protect ourselves, to protect our families, to, perfect, to protect our Iman, to protect our Islam. Today's episode is called Got Facebook. Okay, now I'm sure that a lot of you have Facebook. I have Facebook. Many people have Facebook. It is a very useful tool when used properly. When used improperly, it can lead to a lot of problems. Now, how can you use Facebook in a proper way? Well, there are many ways, alhamdulillah. You can give da'wah, and we'll give maybe some examples even later on. You can use it to communicate with family. You can you know, post a, an ayah or a reminder for your brothers and your sisters. You can post your pictures and share them you know, with your family if you're traveling, for example, or something like that. I mean, there's many, many good ways. You can follow some of the scholars and the mashayikh and watch some videos. Alhamdulillah, Facebook is, is, is a really great tool if used properly. As we said, these kind of things, TV, computers, you know, these kind of social media outlets these are mubah okay unless what's been put into them okay and sometimes we need to be careful because um, you know we, we need to really guard ourselves especially on these kind of things because it's not as simple for example as a tv okay which is you know just a tv and you whatever you put in it whatever tape or whatever cd or dvd you put in the player you are the one who control it this is a bit more complicated okay of course there is some you know, you know, searches and some uh, things that you can control and some settings that you can control to protect yourself. But it's not as easy as, you know, just a TV or a regular thing that you can control yourself or your family or you can, you know, monitor. So, what do we have? We have Twitter, we have Facebook, we have Google now, you know, G+. We have, uh, you know, Facebook, of course, uh, you know, WhatsApp. There used to be MySpace. There's, there's many. I mean, many, many things coming up right now. We have uh, with for, for pictures, different, uh, you know, uh, different sites that deal with different pictures and Picasso. And there's, there's a lot of things you know, out there, social media. People are, you know, we live in this world where you can connect, you know, from the Middle East to China, from China to America, uh, America to Africa in seconds. Right, the news can, can travel and maybe even you know, faster than seconds, just on the click of a button. So social media is definitely a very big thing. And it's bringing in a lot of income. People are making a lot of money. A lot of people are using it. I mean, I think, subhanAllah, I would say, you know, majority of people who have a computer would probably have some kind of access to these things. I'm going to take some interesting statistics right now about specifically about Facebook because today we're looking at also exposing the dangers of not using it properly. So we're going to look at some statistics and at the same time we're going to look at the mistakes that Muslims themselves, Muslim youth are doing them when actually you know, using Facebook or all these social medias, YouTube. So let's start actually with the second thing. Some of the mistakes. Well, a lot of times because it's so easy to communicate with people and to spread the messages and to you know like or share a lot of people do not check what is being said okay and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inst instructs us to check what we hear to check when someone comes to us when someone comes and gives us some news we should check any yani, this person especially if this person is a fasiq okay <laughs> the fusuk i mean it's uh, just the beautiful word that is you know used in the quran to to highlight this 
that we should check any. We should not just, you know, just spread things and this and that, especially if we didn't hear something. And there used to be a scholar, subhanAllah, who used to say that if you say I've heard and you didn't hear, and if you say something that you yourself don't know, and if you say that so-and-so said this, but he didn't actually say it, you are lying. And the kadhab, you are lying, subhanAllah. So this is something very important. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us yani, to, all, to speak the truth. We should speak the truth as Muslim. But you see, it's very easy and very tempting when you hear, you see, oh, you know, this news and that news, and this person did this to just click, click, just share, share, share. So you're actually spreading this facade. And you don't know if it's real even. You're spreading rumors about certain people. You're spreading rumors about maybe a Muslim and hurting their, you know, their integrity, hurting the, you know, their, their honor, subhanAllah. And just click, 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 spread, spread, and more people click and more. And you are taking sin for this. So this is very dangerous. Be careful. Do not just share statuses of people. Do not just share certain pictures and so on. Just when you don't even know what's happening. Do not, you know, uh, uh, you know, suspect people of doing things and you do not have clear information. You have to understand, for example, pictures. These pictures can be photoshopped. These pictures can be changed. So don't just believe right away what you see. People are actually experts at doing these things. And be, remember, the Prophet, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, إِنَّ بَعْدَ الظَّنِّ إِثْ yani, Indeed, when you sometimes, you know, when you suspect someone, when you, you, you look, you know, that maybe I think he's doing this, this can be a sin, subhanAllah. So be careful, take this beautiful advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of heavens and the earth. So, another thing that specifically to the sisters, this is a big thing. They are posting pictures of themselves and allowing males to befriend them and they're posting pictures without hijab on and you know brothers start commenting on them that oh sister this and that and they say thank you and they don't and, so, and then when they go outside they put the hijab but on the Facebook they don't care about the hijab you have to be very careful at the same time as a sister be careful of your husband yes that's right if you are a sister was married be careful of your uh, if you're a sister be careful of your brother why you might have your sister friends online on your Facebook posting pictures and so on without hijab. And you, if you're not taking care of your account, your brother might be able to access. Your husband might be able to access and see these pictures and you can be in some trouble for this, subhanAllah. So be, again, think twice before. There's some responsibility. There are some ethics, Islamic ethics and morals. There's like a fiqh a Facebook that, you know, it needs to be taken into consideration. So do not just jump into it. Oh, everyone's doing it. Let me do it. Let me just do it. Let me click and let me just share all these things. Oh, it's such an amazing thing. I think it's correct, but I don't know. But, you know, who cares? No, this is not the way to do. Let me now move on to some statistics about Facebook just to give you, and social media in general, just to give you an understanding of how big it is and how important it is for people. It says that 23% of Facebook users check their account five or more times daily. Daily, subhanAllah. Look at that. So people, you know, and even sometimes I find myself, because now Facebook is on, on your phone, on your mobile, you know, on your smartphone, on your laptop. You can just always just check, 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 check what's going on, any status. Some people are like obsessed, you know, to, by Facebook. They have to post everything where I am. I'm here eating food. I'm going to the bathroom. I, I mean, just their statuses sometimes are just, you know, horrible and subhanAllah, just even funny. So 23%, they, they check it five times a day. Links, now this is where we have to be careful, especially uh, I've seen some youth having, you know, very young, 12, 10, even 9, as early as 9, having Facebook pages. Links about sex are shared 90% more than any other link. Links about sex are shared 90% more than any other thing. 43% of Facebook users are male, while 57% of Facebook users are female. There's a little bit of an imbalance there. It seems that women are more onto it. 25% of users on Facebook don't bother with any kind of privacy control. Now, why is this important? Because people will befriend you, will accept their you don't even Some people don't even check any who, who is liking them, who is befriending them. And this can get you in trouble. It can be someone, a stranger, someone who wants, you know, like a predator, a child predator or something like that. And they can get to you. 
they can say I'm this, they can say I'm this person. Uh, you know, many times it happens that they'll, you know, they'll tell people, let's meet, you know, we're friends down on Facebook, I've known you for so long, come on, let's meet. And it happens that the youth go and they fall prey to these people. So settings are very important. Do not accept just anyone. Know that person. Make sure you are friends with that person. Make sure you know yani, what's, what's the background and so on of this person before you befriend them. Because a lot of personal information will be shared. Your email may be, sometimes people post their addresses and so on. Let's go back to it. Mont uh, monthly active users now total nearly 850 million. SubhanAllah. 850 million. Most of the youth turn to these uh, to this size to express themselves to connect. Okay, this is something very important. Uh, Facebook, subhanAllah, look at this. Look at the numbers. Where did all this start from? It started in the dorm of a student. It was basically a few students who got together and came up with this idea. And now it is a multi-million dollar business, if not more. SubhanAllah. People are using it. People are using it from, from you know, from from the intellectual to the you know the person who's working in the restaurant to the students to the old people everyone is you know most people are now very very well well versed with Facebook then of course you have YouTube a lot of problems with YouTube as well because this is a video a live video uh, a lot of people can access pornography to YouTube uh, it takes YouTube a while till they can actually flag the video it takes you to a while, they can actually take the video out. So people can be exposed to these things. Uh, the youth, you know, click here, click there. You have the recommendations on the side. We watch in a video, it might be something very Islamic or something, like that, but on the side, you have something very, very evil. Shaitan will make you look at it. You know, it's recommended for you. And then you click and it'll take you somewhere in a total different. So this, there has to be, again, these, uh, you know, the thick of, of, of social media, uh, the ethics that should be used uh, with these. Google is another thing that we said and we talked about it before and yani, sometimes the some search words that we use very very you know insignificant very very uh, yani, honest search words such as you know Pokemon you know children looking or Spider-Man or uh, some kind and you'll get some very very weird things so people have to be careful with this um, the other point that I want to now direct uh, our attention towards is the issue of the culture of Facebook and what's being portrayed on these social medias, you know, YouTube, Twitter. And this is the concept of uh, uh, knowledge cultures. Okay, knowledge cultures is an interesting theory because there are knowledge producing cultures and there are knowledge uh, consuming cultures, right? And it seems that as the Muslims now, we are knowledge consuming. Okay, it's not a Muslim who has invented Facebook. It's not a Muslim who has, you know, deep, you know, very, you know, organized social media or Twitter or anything like that. It is the non-Muslims. And of course, their ethics will come and basically, you know, work with these kind of things. You know, their ethics, their understanding of how things should be run will be the prime drive in, in when it comes to, you know, how to make these things, what kind of settings, what kind of privacy setting, and what kind of things are allowed to be put on these uh, these social medias. So we are consuming this culture, we are taking it in, and as, as we talked before, we are believing it, we are slowly, so we keep, keep repeating it, repeating it, being, you know, it's part and parcel of our daily life, so we are actually influenced by this. Inshallah, we'll continue after the break, we'll talk more about the psychological impact and how people are using these social medias even to distort certain aspects of reality on Huda TV. What we did in our life to make it that way So we need to be ready and prepared Ramadan is only a few sunsets away from the month of change, an opportunity that is given to us only once a year. Take a look at this. Take a look at your future. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa It's a very windy and dusty day here. We're about an hour out of Cairo in the middle of the desert. Al-Ikhlas, sincerity, 
whether you are alone in the middle of the ocean, in a boat, or on a river, or in a busy city street, your only way to success in this life and the next is through sincerity. Methanol, which is the fuel that is used for rockets, that is placed inside cigarettes, that we're putting into our bodies when we're breaking our fast. SubhanAllah. Together, let's plant the seeds, the seeds of change. We did not laugh to make it that way, so we need to be ready and prepared. Welcome back. We are talking about Facebook, social media. This episode is enti entitled Got Facebook. We looked at the social media and some of the mistakes that people have, specifically Muslims, uh, do when it comes to Facebook, YouTube, you know, showing their pictures and, you know, brothers seeing sisters, sisters seeing brothers, spreading you know, news that is not correct, uh, you know, hurting people's, uh, you know, integrity sometimes. So w these are some things that there has to be a fiqh, there has to be something to explain, you know, the ethics and the morals that people should, you know, undertake when, you know, dealing with these social media outlets. Now, I want to say that the social media is a very important tool for marketing these days, okay? It's a very important tool for marketing. Hollywood, uh, pop culture, many things, you know, many corporations are pushing their products through advertisement on social media. What is cool, what is good, you know, you can post commercials, you can post pictures. So it's a very, very, very important marketing tool and people are using it. At the same time, it's a marketing tool for ideas and philosophies, okay? A lot of people are spreading their messages through these uh, social medias. And we look, uh, when we watch Al Jazeera, we watch the many different channels, we find that you know, it reaches throughout the world and people are expressing themselves, they're saying their point of, of view and opinion, and it reaches everyone, right? Now, of course, <laughs> in Islam, not everyone can just talk, you know, whatever they want. Not everyone just qualified to speak about every issue. Today, it seems that we like to just let everyone, everyone has a voice, right? This is the, the Western concept, the Western culture that we sh everyone should have a voice, we give everyone a voice. But what does that mean? I mean? Do you give a voice to the criminal? Do you give a voice to the rapist? That he should explain himself and he should have his own rights and he should have this? No, come on, subhanAllah. That he should give his da'wah? No. Right? We need to be rational about this. Not everyone has a voice. People have been misguiding people with, you know, with giving this opportunity to speak about issues that have, you know, they have no qualification in. Can you give the voice to a person who works in a restaurant who's a cook, to give him the ability to speak like a doctor, to fool the people that he's a doctor. But today it's very easy. People are fooling people that they're this, that they're that, you know, just claiming certain things. And it's very easy to the social media to actually fool people and to cause so much harm, right? So I want to recommend a very, very beautiful documentary. It's a very good documentary. It's called The Corporation. You can Google it. You can, I think it's also on YouTube. The Corporation. And we watched this in a psychology class. I believe it was my third year uh, in, psychology, uh, in psychology. And it was basically a documentary about how corporations and use certain you know, aspects of advertisement and media to push what they want. How they study the different trends, the social trends, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. And how they actually, you know, infiltrate things, ideas in there to change. Um, for example, it was, uh, you know, the concept of smoking. Back in the United States, when you go a few, you know, quite a few years back, many decades back, it was not, you know, smoking was not a thing for women, right? It was kind of like looked down upon and people were not really, you know, impressed with women that smoke. Men would smoke, but not so much women. So what did they do? Someone actually related to Sigmund Freud did a study and they found that we can actually make the cigarette like something good. Okay, we can give it a good uh, connotation. And this is something very important and we need to pay attention. Why? Right? Because this happens throughout, you know, the social media things when something bad can be made into something good. It depends how you present it. And of course, being exposed over and over, you'll believe it, you accept it, you'll like it. 
So what they did is they had a parade, uh, some kind of holiday parade, and basically in this parade they paraded uh, some kind of a mannequin or model of the Statue of Liberty, right? So these in these uh, parade, these women who were on this car, this parade car with the Statue of Liberty, they were smoking. And the people call this uh, the, the torch of liberty, right? The smoke, the cigarette being called the torch of liberty. And the fact that there were women smoking, this basically, it was, you know, it was broadcasted and everything. It became that, wow, this is such a nice thing. We never really thought about it, the torch of liberty. And slowly, within, with, you know, within a few you know, days, a few weeks, a very short period of time, people start accepting the fact that it's okay for women to smoke, it's okay to smoke in general. It's actually a good thing, you know, that it represents the torch, you know, of liberty and so on. SubhanAllah. So, again, all this was based on studies. And this person was related to Sigmund Freud. This person knew where exactly to hit and how to hit. And this has given the, the, uh, the industry of cigarettes, you know, just su such a big boost in the United States of America. So, this is something, again, as I said, related to marketing and the social media. The other thing that is very fundamental, especially for Muslim parents to understand, the Muslim youth, is that using these programs in the wrong way, what happens? Dating becomes easy here. And this is a big problem, right? Uh, a lot of times people hook up online, you know, they'll say that, hey, you and you, uh, let's talk. They talk, they say, I love you now. They, they didn't even see each other. They'll send a picture, but maybe it's not even the real picture. You don't even know who you're dating. You don't even know who it is. It might be someone who's going to hurt you. It might be someone that is dangerous. But this is the problem with this social media. People say, but you can use videos and so on and so forth. Type, maybe he looks nice and everything, but how do you know who he is inside, what he wants to do, his intention? You cannot know that. I'll tell you a very funny story, and this is real from one of these examples. There was a husband and a wife, and they both kind of had these, you know, cyber dating, you know, relationships with some people. And both of them were talking to someone, and they said, okay, let's date, you know, let's meet up, actually. So the, the wife, you know, messaged that person, and they set up a date. The husband also messaged that person, they set up a date. So they had to meet at a certain place, you know, both couples, whatever. But actually, when they met, they discovered that actually the, who they were talking to all along, actually they were talking to each other, and that they were already married. SubhanAllah. And of course, they divorced, and it was just a big mess. But see, these things can happen. In, men, in other incidents, youth talking on, you know, on... Uh, on Facebook and on different chat, you know, rooms, basically talking to older people, girls specifically, being very influenced. You know, the guys are saying, no, I love you, I like you, please meet me. And subhanAllah, it, it ends up that the girl, be, you know, becomes murdered, you know, she, she gets murdered or raped or many other, you know, evil things. This has happened a lot. So we need to be very, very, very uh, careful. The social media can be a gateway to the world. Specifically now, this concept, this very dangerous concept comes in, you know, that you link with everyone and you talk to anyone and anyone can see you and anyone can hear you. And I watched a very, very shocking documentary and that is, you know, it was about the Saudi society and how some women in Saudi Arabia are actually using this gateway to the world to show their bodies and so on and so forth on uh, the internet to the world through these, through these chats. And the, uh, the Saudi authorities were trying to stop it and trying to somehow be able to limit this or stop it. And it's almost impossible because these chat rooms, okay, if you block one, another one will start. If you block this, there's another one. Everyone, you know, can have a, 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 a webcam now into their computer and their laptop. I have one right here, very small. So it's very, you know, it's very tough. The only thing, again, we need to go back to that taqwa, that, you know, that those manners that Islam teaches us in dealing with these tools that are available to us. The other thing uh, that we, subhanAllah, we need to think about is, as I said, the uh, media brainwashing, okay? Politically speaking, uh, religiously speaking, as we talked in a previous episode about the influence of missionaries, that how they use media, their, fa their Facebook pages, their internet pages, and how they can, you know, attack the Muslims from inside. So they might not be able to get into the houses of the Muslims, but uh, physically, but they got into with their videos, with their ideas, uh, and so on and so forth. 
Pornography, that is a very, very big thing. Pornography is spreading through the social media, as I've showed in the link, that sex links you know, are pretty much shared 90% more than any other link. And a lot of times when it comes to YouTube, for example, you'll find that you know, it doesn't allow necessarily pornography, even though some people put it until the, you know, YouTube takes it off, it takes some time, but it allows almost close to it or something to be you know, very, very you know, similar to it. And this is not from the Muslim man. It's haram for us to watch. It's haram to engage. But it's available, so people are watching it. Now, what can we as Muslims yani, uh, do? There's really no escape uh, to this other than turning back to the deen, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We need to develop a fiqh of uh, in, you know, engaging in these type of things. I've said our scholars, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, need to uh, you know, hold lectures and to teach the people the manners to engage while using these things, the responsibilities uh, to instill the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should always remind ourselves when we go into these things, yani, what am I doing? What am I doing here? Who am I talking to? Is this appropriate? Is this not? If the Prophet ﷺ would be here, would he you know, agree of this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me all the time. And these things that we need to keep in our, you know, in our mind. You, the youth, who are so engaged on these you know, social medias, please keep that in mind. Because if not, you might find yourself in big problems. We need to be careful as parents. Now, I'm addressing the parents, okay? The TV, YouTube, Facebook, these are not babysitters. Okay? Spend time with your children. Don't leave your child unsupervised. A lot of times we allow our children, our family, to have their laptop, their private thing, their cell phone, and so on and so forth, in the privacy of their own room. They lock their room. I, this is the, probably the best advice I can give any parent, even the youth. Please be careful. Okay? Don't leave your children to be alone. Don't leave your children to have their own laptops and access to a world, to the whole world basically. Supervise them. Leave the computer, the family computer, one computer in the living room somewhere where there's people, people can pass by and so on. And, you know, supervise this. Have some kind of parenting, you know, monitor what they have today, you know, like parent control. Make sure you check the settings. Make sure you, if you find that your child has engaged in this, you're a young person, you know, and your family is engaged, make sure you talk to them. Make sure you solve this problem before it gets out of hand. Today we find that kids have iPhones, iPads, email, Facebook from a very early age. You, they don't need to have these things from a very early age. When they get to high school, to school, you know, when they have, they, they need to, for assignments or anything like that, okay, fine. And even then, of course, supervise. But little kids, eight, seven, and so on, they don't need these things. So please be careful. This is so important. Again, the best advice that I can give myself, subhanAllah, and you is to have this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be careful at the same time to, you know, to have the, the parents and everyone watching. And I close this episode by raising awareness of something very important. And that is cyberbullying, which is a very, very huge thing that's happening now on these social media outlets. Cyberbullying... Please get informed, understand. There's been recently in Canada a girl who killed herself because she was talking to someone. She posted some inappropriate pictures. These people took it and spread it around and destroyed her reputation. And she basically committed suicide. They kept going on and on. You know, one pa Facebook book, book would, uh, would Facebook uh, page would be shut. Another one would start. And she just kept with it. And she moved to this different city, different city, different city. And they kept following her because obviously it's just through, through online. And subhanAllah, she committed suicide. This is not the only case, but this is something that we need to be aware of. Parents need to be aware of. We need to talk to our you know, children, to the youth. Be careful again. Have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be aware. Educate yourself. Be strong. You are the future of this ummah. Inshallah, we'll see you on the next episode on Sunnah Style. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> The Quran sent to mankind to guide us all the way to the day, the day where we.
will be as what we did in our life to make it that way. So we need to be ready and prepared.